All right, today we're going to be doing a, a little bit of what happens with transfer cases. Uh, once again, um, this is Fairbanks 404. I mainly work on Jeep stuff. Um, this happens to be parts that I keep for, just so I can show customers uh, common things that happen with the NP231 transfer case. Um, same with 242, 241, Chevy, Ford, Dodge, um, pretty much any of them that are the, they all have very common issues and it's designed that way. They, they want certain things to fail, otherwise they, you would never have an issue. Um, we'll start off with chains. Very common and you can see here, if I'm going to do this, you can see how this chain kind of moves around. It's got hot, hard spots. I mean, this here won't even move. You know, it, it's bad. Um, what I do, I usually grab it by two hands and I, I sit there and flex them this way and see how much play I have. Um, this one, as you can see, it's just, I mean, it's, it was a no brainer. Um, it was actually bad enough that it was starting to rub the transfer case here. Um, he heard a noise and he stopped driving it. And because of that, it saved him a bunch of money. Because even though that metal wearing on that aluminum, aluminum going into the unit, it is a softer metal. It still basically sandblasts all these other parts and it gets to the point where these parts aren't usable. Um, one of the things that happen is, is this here, is these, this is the old pump. This is a, basically a, a low gravity circulating pump. Um, once this is assembled, the shaft rides the shaft rides here as the shaft turns it creates a, a low volume pressure which picks up fluid from the lowest point pumps it into the transfer or into the main shaft via all these little holes and that is what lubes the entire unit and it runs out runs back down and, and recycles now what happens is here if you've got a leak you run it low it doesn't take long because you're talking about a super thin cast aluminum piece that has to have super tight tolerances so that it fits down in there this face has to fit has to fit on top and clean so that when it circulates all the fluid that's coming in here is going down the shaft and not leaking out around everywhere else these seals are notorious for going bad uh, this one here is rock hard um, so Oil, uh, unit, the units get low, run low on oil, pump messes up, then the pump either starves, messes up, and then it re, uh, reduces the flow of the unit. Um, here, you can see this is a completely scarred and, and you know, it's supposed to be nice and polished and this thing is just, you know, horrible. I mean, it's just destroyed. This one uh, wasn't so bad on the inside, but you can see it changed colors. It's gotten hot. And a lot of it's due to rust from either moisture or lack of oil and sitting. Um, synchronizers, yeah, there is one that I put in. I've got another video showing this. Uh, second, uh, it's the older units, but here it got hot enough where it's cracked, and so it no longer fits and it's wore out. Um, the other issue that we have with these units is when the oil um, gets low uh, or you, you create create issues like this. This is the front um, range fork. This is the tool, uh, four wheel drive high or uh, four wheel drive low um, or four wheel drive low and four or two high. Either way, uh, when this runs low on oil, this is riding in here and it basically, it's, you know, without the oil, it welds the aluminum to the to the metal and it'll it will not shift in and out to the point it actually will bust past kind of like this one bust past so now you're shifting and it ain't i mean nothing if it's moving it ain't doing nothing because it's just moving back and forth through there uh, what they do and that what i say they is dodge um, they were in their genius mindset was to take a shift fork now this is um uh, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and you'll take your shift fork here, and you actually, in order to take up your tolerances, they have these little plastic pieces that fit right on there. And that literally, as soon as it gets hot, plastic melts, 
doing like that. You can see it's just every one of them is scarred up. And this is a typical rebuild. You know, every one of them always gets changed. But then when those go bad and you still drive it, then you start grinding the metal down. And they'll be, you know, all the way down to a point. Instead of a, a fork style, it's just ground down to nothing. Now you're can dumping all that metal into the unit. And even though you were gonna to have to do a rebuild, by keep driving it, it you're you're losing parts. It costs you more money. So 99% of the time, it's better as soon as you have an issue to get the issue fixed, whether it's a leak, whether it's any type of an engagement issue. Um, if you have moisture, it is a pain in the butt to get the moisture out. You can drain the fluid and you can put new fluid in and then within a week it looks like milk and magnesia again. Uh, if you let it sit, it pits. It can't have any of this inside here. This is where the metal shift forks ride. It has to be clean, otherwise it will it'll hang up and it'll affect your engagement so, uh, that one there's got a little bit here and there and it has to be perfect um, it, you, you, it's too much work to try to polish those up uh, so it's inexpensive most of these parts are. Um, one other thing that happens a lot is when there's an issue and you think well hell, there's a rear housing those are dime a dozen well right there the bearing something happened inside and the bearing which rides there was slammed against it and it actually broke that lip off. Most of the time, this entire ring will completely be gone and now you've got in play issues because the, that shelf is where the bearing rides and it gives you your in play. Uh, I will be doing a um, um, video on uh, how to tell when your chain's bad uh, while it's in the unit. A couple of little things that I, that I can show you that you can feel and hear and I'll be another video. Have a good day.